Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. My pleasure to be on. Saudi Arabia has introduced a new application process for people applying for Hajj from Canada, the United States, basically Europe, the Americas, and Australia. And Dr. Shabir, it came as quite a surprise to people because it was just a few weeks before Hajj was supposed to begin, and suddenly people, you know, had to apply anew. People who had, who had already put down payments with um, travel agencies now had to switch um, and apply on a website. So what are your thoughts on this new process, Dr. Shabir? Yeah, the, the suddenness of it is uh, really uh, uh, surprising. And of course, uh, it uh, gives rise to a lot of, uh, you know, scrambling to um, get things in order for that. Um, the, um, the, the offer of, uh, you know, lower prices by cutting off uh, the, the middleman, uh, cutting out the middleman, um, is, uh, I mean, it, that, that sounds good. Whether that will be maintainable, sustainable in, in the long run is questionable. And uh, the, some people have a question also about uh, the portal, like how effective is this portal? Is it working well? Um, some people are having difficulty with the credit card uh, payments o- over the portal. Uh, some people wonder about uh, who is behind this portal, where is it uh, put together, in which country? Um, and uh, some, some people who signed up initially for the lottery uh, started getting uh, mysteriously advertisements from uh, some skincare company. <laughs> <laughs> I read about that, yes. Yeah. So th- that, that gives rise to the question of data protection. Uh, how protected is your data after you know, it is um, um, inputted in, into the system? So, Dr. Shapiro, let's talk about what traditionally happens. So, traditionally, people go with a travel agency, right? And there are many Hajj travel agencies. Some of them are better than others. So, people will put a down payment with a travel agency, or they'll pay altogether at a certain point. Um, and then they apply, through, you know, and, and then they get accepted. And then they go with the travel agency to Hajj. So, they have a guide there who, who takes them around um, and, and tells them, you know, th- at this step you do this, at that step you do this. And also they have all, everything provided. So their airfare will be provided. When they get there, their hotel, every single aspect, their food, for example, it's not like they have to dish out extra money um, to be able to enjoy the Hajj. So that all changes with this new portal and this new application process, Dr. Shabir. Yes, uh, of course, various travel agencies would have offered uh, different facilities and, and um um, perks with their packages. And of course, all of this need, need, need to be uh, declared up front. And, and the savvy traveler uh, would uh, check with various ag- agencies and find out the details of their package. Are you providing the meals? What kind of meals? When is it going to be? Is it going to be an op- open buffet meal? What sort of meal are you providing? Uh, which airline are we most likely to travel on? Um, are there going to be stopovers or are we going to go on a direct flight? So uh, you, you have access to the uh, local travel agent and, and you can compare prices and services before you finally book with one or, or the other. And in an open market system where, you know, there, there are no controls, uh, what will control the price is the, uh, the forces of demand and supply. Um, and we know from economics that if uh, the market is free, then the price will eventually settle on an equilibrium. Um, because if there is a dollar to be made, somebody else will enter into the market to offer the services to make that dollar until there is no dollar to be made anymore. Um, you know, if one needs to make money, they go somewhere else, They're like into a different industry. They offer a different service because with this service, there's not going to be more. It's almost like, you know, let's say a, a store opens up and, and uh, you know, they're selling uh, product A. Well, um, and they're making a lot of money. So more and more stores will open up selling product A because they want to make <laughs> that money too. Uh, but eventually, uh, they don't have enough customers to go around to buy all of this product A uh, from all of these different stores. So no more stores will open up. Uh, stores will open up selling product B mm-hmm. and so on because the price now levels off and there's no more money to be made. Um, uh, b- with, with more suppliers, the price goes down and so on. So, so too with the open market system of allowing travel agents to offer their services, of course, they're going to make a profit. That's natural because they're offering services, they're, ma- they're making a profit. And people always complain about the height of the prices and the ri- rising prices. Of course, uh, prices rise for a number of different uh, reasons, but one always suspects that the travel agents are making a lot of money out of this. 
Uh, but uh, the assurance we have is that once it's an open market, uh, you know, the price will eventually level off uh, because somebody will come in to offer a slightly lower price and a slightly lower price and a slightly lower price until, you know, they can't go any lower. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in business. Mm -hmm. And now, we, if everything is controlled uh, by the Saudi government and uh, as, as it's now apparently being proposed, uh, and, and it's already put into effect, then uh, one does not have this kind of free market economy uh, in view. Um, one has a monopoly, an oligarchy, actually, um, the, where you know, there's one supplier um, supplying it, and you just have to accept whatever they offer. And so far, what we have seen on offer from uh, some of the information that uh, has been minimally published um, it does not give a lot of details. It leaves a lot of uh, uh, lacuna and, and confusions in the minds of people. Yes, like, I think it's not clear, for example, like Canadians, how will they get to Saudi Arabia, right? It seems like beyond the package that's offered, they would have to take a flight to the U.S. and then go to Saudi Arabia from there. So a, a lot of you know, confusion then, you know, is Medina included, right? Medina is a city in Saudi Arabia that is not mandatory for the Hajj, but you know, a lot of people, since they're already there, they like to go to Medina. And it doesn't seem like in some of the packages, Medina is included. So there are other th questions that people might have that might, might not be able, they might not be able to get an answer to. Yes, and people will be surprised at the last moment and so on. So uh, I spoke about the suddenness with which this was introduced. I would have thought that uh, if, if I would have done something like that, you know, if I had to think it like, how would I do that? So I would think that, you know, of course, I'm not an expert in that, but uh, the, in in, in contrast with the suddenness, I would have thought, okay, so let me, for the first year, do a pilot project. Leave everything else as it's running, but for, as a pilot project, I take a thousand pilgrims through this new registration uh, process, see how it works, make sure everything is going well, there are no hiccups in the system and whatever. And um, then the next year we do 10,000, then the next year 100,000. And, and now we have a full uh, scale system for perhaps 100,000 is what will be accepted from Europe, uh, America, and Australia. Um, if you're thinking of, you know, 1 million pilgrims, is, which is what their, uh, their target is this year, as opposed to like 2.5 million pre-pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, but to, to suddenly introduce it like this, then the, the possibility of hiccups are there. Like people are having difficulties with the payment processing. Like one person, um, uh, complaining to the uh, imams in the imams uh, WhatsApp group uh, says, I tried my Walmart credit card and then that didn't work. Uh, then I tried my Costco uh, CIBC <laughs> credit card and then that one didn't work. And um, then I went back to the Walmart credit card and I increased somehow, somebody said he increased the, the amount, and, but that still didn't work. And eventually he um, uh, called um, he tried his American Express. I think that's how he finally got it, got it done. And then that too, he was having difficulty with until he had to call payment protection services or something like that related to his credit card. Maybe because of the overseas transaction, it looked uh, suspicious to, uh, the, um, uh, to the card company and, and they were blocking it. But, uh, you know, with his phone call, uh, they approved it. Imagine, you know, all of this, uh, you know, confusion and um And on top of that, Hajj is, uh, the Hajj application process is always confusing, right? Because you have, to, you have to take, let's say, two or three weeks out of your schedule, right? So you have to make a lot of arrangements, you know, uh, for your children, for your work, uh, for other responsibilities that you might have. Then you apply. You're not sure if you're going to be accepted. That's just a general system. So now suddenly... All that is thrown in, thrown out the window, right? Yes. The money that you might have deposited with the travel agency, mm -hmm. you don't know if you're going to get it back or when you're going to get it back. And then you're going to put new money into this new system, right? So it's all yes. very difficult. I mean, I think maybe, you know, it could be that in a few years, the system will be perfect, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it will be better than the current system that we've had, right? Yes. Um, but and right now, it just seems so overwhelming. It, it's chaotic. And, yeah. you, know, if it, you know, it shows a certain... Um, uh, level of lack of care uh, on the part of those who have so suddenly implemented this system. Because uh, I spoke with one of the travel agents who uh, takes uh, a group, uh, uh, groups of people for Hajj and Omrah from, from Canada. And uh, he explained to me that uh, just up until recently, they were getting indications from the Saudi government that everything is fine this year after the couple of years of lockdown where they were only allowing local people to perform the Hajj. 
Now they're going to allow foreigners. So this year, it's things are proceeding as normal as it though pre-pandemic. Of course, with a lower um, uh, numbers of, of pilgrims being allowed than 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 pre-pandemic. But so on this basis, uh, the agent started to receive the money and passports from people depositing uh, and and getting ready to go with them for Hajj this year. And uh, and then suddenly they got this new directive and they had to start returning the money and passports to people because people will need that in order to uh, log on to the new system. Uh, now, uh, in his case, it looks like he was able to return the money, but uh, there there are uh, cases where the money will, will not be on, on hand because when, when these agents get the money, they start booking hotels, they start booking flights and whatever. Of course, they're not going to book a specific flight for a person. They're going to book flights en masse. They're going to mm -hmm. buy so many seats and so on. So go, their money is going to go in so many different directions, including, of course, their own administrative costs. So uh, there's Sky News in the UK um, uh, put out a video, uh, and, and they have an article too, it seems, but I haven't read the article, but listening to the video, um, they're, they're saying that uh, there are hundreds of um, uh, tour operators in the UK uh, that may suddenly go bankrupt mm -hmm. uh, as a result of this sudden uh, move. So, you know, these things have to be foreseen. It, it, I mean, it's, it's very clear. If you're going to suddenly do this, by, by the time Ramadan is over, in, in our present uh, circumstance now as we are, in the, you know, where we are in the, in the Islamic calendar at the moment, by this time, people would have already, um, in normal times, have uh, deposited their passports, paid their money. They already know what flight package and, and uh, what group they're going with and all of that. Uh, so to call it at this stage, this is very late. It's very close. As you said, people need to organize their life and, and know if they're going or not going and um, uh, book their holidays and all, uh, all of that, their vacation from work. But the, the important thing is to see a, uh, that, that this fallout can happen. Like you, you don't drop an ax and, and let it fall on so many people all at once suddenly and not care about what's going to happen with them, right? Mm -hmm. All these tour operators going bankrupt. And these are people who have dedicated their, their lives to the service of religion. They, mm -hmm. you know, they, they are making a profit, not, no, no doubts about that. Otherwise, they might soon have to turn to something else. But uh, some of them are sincerely doing it, profit or no profit. And uh, even if the others are doing it for profit, nonetheless, they are serving a good industry because there's so many things we can do with our lives, right? But somebody says, oh, you know what? I want to take people for, for Hatch. That's their dream. That's their vision. That's what they want to be proud of. That's what I do. And, uh, and now suddenly the ax drops on them and uh, they're going to go bankrupt. That's not uh, so very nice. And then uh, the, the persons who deposited their monies with uh, these travel agents, they may not get their monies back because uh, that's the whole thing about bankruptcy. The bankruptcy protection is going to protect the, uh, the, the, the tour operators uh, from having to repay what they cannot uh, repay. And so mm -hmm. uh, the average Muslim on, on the ground is going to suffer a loss here. So, you know, how do people um, make such irresponsible decisions at the higher level, not caring for how it's going to impact people on the ground? Uh, that this is like uh, astounding. It's uh, bewildering. What's your mm -hmm. advice, Dr. Shabir, for someone who's planning to go to Hajj this year and is, you know, a little bit, as you said, bewildered and overwhelmed? Well, if, uh, you know, if uh, Allah blesses you to go to Hajj, then uh, especially if that's the first time, uh, then mabruk to you. May Allah SWT bless you and take you there safely and uh, give you the Hajj mabrur and bring you back safely as well. Uh, the Hajj mabrur means like a, a righteous Hajj, one that is uh, acceptable to God. Um, and now, but of course, you need to start uh, right away because the, uh, the approval process is um, underway. Uh, make sure that uh, you are following the uh, prescribed times, um, uh, going to the lottery system uh, while it is still open for you, uh, and follow up uh, with the registration and payment and whatever. But one of the most important things you'll need to do is to read up uh, on the Hajj and watch as many videos about the procedures and all of that, so you know exactly what to do when you, when you get there. Because previously, uh, going with a group, uh, with a local uh, a tour um, company, uh, often it meant that you, you, you had a tour guide with you, a, a Muslim scholar who 
uh, knows all about the Hajj and, uh, and, and can you know, guide you along the way. And in addition, usually uh, the Muslim scholars would be um, giving spiritual advice all, of, all along and lectures and so on, so uplifting the, the person so that the whole thing is a spiritual experience from start to finish. Um, uh, but nonetheless, you need to at least cover the basics. So you need to know what is where and where you have to be and what sequence of doing things and so on. So uh, study, uh, because uh, under these new packages which are being offered by uh, the Mutawif, uh, the authority in charge in, in charge in Saudi Arabia for you know the, the Hajj and Umrah, um, uh, it, it's not so clear what guide they will provide and how experienced and uh, knowledgeable that guide will will be. So um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you. And I guess do the best you can and, and trust in God that you know God will accept from you whatever you offer to God. That's right, that's right. And of All course, right. our prayers are with you. Thank you for mm -hmm. that, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. Our videos reach people all over the world. We hope you will seize the opportunity to share in the reward from God. Please support us today. <laughs>